Discussion keeps the world turning. This is Roundtable. Ride sharing in China, a paid version of hitchhiking, is on the rise. But so is the chaos. With conflicts brewing between drivers and passengers, let's dig into why they're clashing and what needs to change. And could Chef GPT in the kitchen cook up your next favorite meal? We take a look at the future of recipe creation. Coming to you live from Beijing, this is Roundtable. I'm He Young. For today's program, I'm joined by Steve Hatherly and Li Yi in the studio. First on today's show. Ride sharing in China, or Shunfengche in Chinese, available through ride hailing platforms such as Didi and Hello Chuxing, can be seen as a paid digital version of hitchhiking, where drivers offer rides to passengers traveling along the same route. Unlike traditional hitchhiking, this service is organized through apps, allowing users to prearrange rides and split travel costs. As the ride sharing option continues to grow on these car. Hailing apps, so do the complaints. With the market expected to hit 75.8 billion yuan or 10.8 billion U.S. dollars by 2026, many users are voicing concerns about disorganization and conflict between drivers and passengers. Li Yi, please. Um, help us to explain this online ride sharing service in a little bit more detail. And it's a pretty common feature used by a ton of people every day, right? It's a pretty common feature, and also I have been, you know, used this ride sharing services for several times. And also, my husband has been taking on, you know,、uh, ride sharing orders as a driver. So I happen to know something about this. So, for example, if you used a、uh, the major. Uh, uh, ride hailing platform here in China. If you are a passenger, the way you get a ride sharing is, well, just like regular ride hailing、uh, hailing services. You just、uh, you know write down your、uh, departure time and also your arriving、uh, destination, and、uh, also the system will ask you. The earliest departure time and also the latest departure time. So whether or not you want to wait for the driver for a while, and then the system would also ask you whether you want to share the empty seat if you got this red sharing services. And then you know based on different options, you can just publish your route, and then the driver can pick up. Uh, your order, or you can also invite drivers that share pretty much similar routes to take on your orders, and the prices will be different based on your, I mean, options, distance, and also the number of passengers. But in theory, while commonly、uh, to say that the、uh, price for this ride sharing service is cheaper than regular. Uh, mm-hmm. Car hailing service. For example, if it's about a four forty kilometers ride, for this ride sharing service, if you if you are willing to share this empty、uh, seat with other passenger, then that will be about fifty five yuan. That's about eight U.S. dollars. And if you、uh, decide no, I don't really want to share the empty seat, that will be sixty five yuan. While if you take an a regular car、uh, hailing service or kuai chu, that's about ninety yuan.、Uh, if it's taxi, That's about one hundred thirty yuan. So you can、mm. see this way、mm. cheaper than the regular taxi yeah, and ride sharing it's service. It's like fifty percent off,、yes. isn't it? It's a little bit more time consuming. I assu- I assume because you have to fill in、um, different boxes as opposed to the regular ride hailing, where you just click where you want to go and then they come almost immediately. It's also a little bit different, as Lee explained, in the sense that you offer a window. Uh, where you say if you pick me up between this time and this time, it's going to be okay. If you wait longer, I'm curious to know.、Uh, do you get a further discount if you say I can wait a little bit more? No, I don't think that's the option. Basically, it offers a more casual environment for driver and passenger. So、uh, both of you. Acknowledge that this is more like a shared service. That is not a very so-called professional service. So、mm. that's why you will be w- willing to wait for the driver or the passenger. Got it. But it does get cheaper, right? With、yeah. each additional passenger, if one person joins you, it gets a little bit cheaper. If、yes. a second person joins you. 
meaning a third person in total, it gets even cheaper, yes? Yes, exactly. Got it. Yeah, internationally, um, very similar services offered abroad, Uber and some other ride-hailing companies. Um, for example, Uber has Uber Pool in London. That's what they call it there. Um, they have some cities in Europe and in uh, West in Australia, and it allows passengers traveling along similar routes to share a ride, split the, fa- uh, split the fare. So Uber offers it and Lyft offers it as well. Have you heard of Lyft before? Uh, only in Western yeah. reports. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Uh, L-Y-F-T. They have something called Lyft Shared, and these are very similar services comparable to ride sharing here in China, although they're only available in select cities worldwide. But not all ride hailing platforms globally provide this option. Only some of them do. Yes, and also I think it's kind of important to note that uh, here in China, this ride-sharing feature is widely known, um, and a lot of people use it, but it still remains a sliver of the car-hailing business. Uh, car-hailing apps in this country provide so many different types of uh, services, aside from the regular car hailing, which most people would know, aside from this one, the ride sharing literally. And also the terms could be a little bit confusing for people because I see in uh, English reports, they call Uber and the or DD these services, ride sharing services. Mm-hmm. Um, but in fact, if you want to get technical, they're ride hailing services. And what we're talking about here with the Shunfeng Shu, they're literally ride sharing. Yeah. yeah. In America, they have it as well. Uber has it as well. And I went to the Uber website to, mm-hmm. just to see how they described it. It's called Uber X Share. Mm-hmm. And it says, I'll read to you, this is what it says. Open up the Uber app and enter your destination in the where to box. Once you confirm that your pick, once you confirm your pickup and destination address are correct, select share and then tap confirm share the app will try to match your car with other riders heading your way get up to 20 percent off if you're matched with mm-hmm. a co-rider so it's basically the a similar uh, kind of thing the similar thing that we have here in china yes and in china alongside these things we also have designated drivers this is when somebody has had alcohol and can't drive your own car home and then you can book a designated driver mm-hmm. on the app to uh, drive your car home so this is one service out of the many that um, these apps can make a ton of money from, I suppose. So an- initially, folks really liked this green, shared, and cheaper car transportation model, and it seems to be a market that continues to grow. So what are the benefits to that? Well, I think the benefits, uh, as we discussed, is a greener uh, way of transportation. So, uh, you know, according to, I checked the uh, official description of the is uh, right sharing or hitch surveys of DD choosing. So according to its official app, it really defines this red sharing as a win-win service for both drivers and passengers. So, you know, the platform really defines this service as something that can both, you know, offering offering convenience and benefits for drivers and passengers. So I, th- so I would say a major benefit for, you know, both drivers and the passenger would, would be cost of saving. Mm-hmm. So for passengers, it's, it's, it's obviously cheaper than the regular right hailing surveys and also taking a taxi and meantime for drivers especially for a lot of drivers are taking up this uh, ride sharing service or business their uh, mindset would be it's a very good way to offset their travel expenses for example their gasoline and also even for the uh, bridge and highway tolls which i think we can discuss about it later when not rules about this you know sharing this uh, highway tolls can be very different from the regular car uh, hailing services because the platform actually encourages passengers and driving uh, and drivers to share this highway tolls. It does, it's not really, you know, regulate which side to take this fee. So which which also caused a little bit of controversy or debate about this mm-hmm. uh, regulation, mm-hmm. I guess. You yeah. mentioned the growth in the market, though, and, and it really is. Let's take a look at some numbers. The penetration rate of ride sharing option services, it's gradually increasing. There was a report from a, a research firm called Frost and Sullivan. 
And in that report, it revealed that the penetration rate of ride-sharing option services, it's going to rise. Uh, it was 0.25% in 2021. That's going up to 0.65% in 2026, mm-hmm. if those projections hold to be true. And that indicates that the market is still relatively young. It's still in the early stages of development, but it also indicates that it has really, really big growth potential. Mm. And this also shows that with all the other services that I mentioned earlier, those are like the chunk of the business for ride hailing platforms. And this, in a way, maybe people used to take it as a slightly idealistic green (laughs) um, option out of the whole business. Um, But it's really interesting how business has panned out. And um, there are plenty of complaints, as well as some people are relatively satisfied with it. So what are your findings, Lee? Well, I think a major complaint from this are uh, hitch or ride sharing passengers is that they find that their drivers could be using different platforms when they're taking on their order. That means, in theory, uh, as a passenger, uh, you have already chosen whether or not you want to share the um, the empty seat when you place the order. But the fact that uh, the driver can be using different, I mean, can be uh, uh, can be registering their uh, information on different platforms that's, and using platforms at the same time. That's a really, really, really important thing to know is that there's, and that's legal. The drivers are allowed to do this. They can register with platform A, they can register with platform B, C, and D, and they can take a passenger from platform A and then take another passenger from platform B. And one of the biggest problems with doing that from a passenger's perspective is your estimated time of arrival because you can't, there's no way for you to know because you only get the information from your destination on your app, Mm -hmm. but that other passenger only has the information on their app. And there was a passenger named Lin here in China who complained that he often faces situations where the drivers take more passengers from different ride hailing platforms, even after he paid extra money for an exclusive ride sharing option service. He does that uh, to save time. And once he was told that there were uh, still three other passengers from three different ride hailing platforms, and that makes his ride or anyone's ride who, who ends up in that situation a lot longer than it was supposed to be. Right. So it's kind of like being kind of clever in exploiting the system a little bit, and they're not breaking, technically speaking, any rules. Yeah, but Lin's example, uh, one time he took a one-hour trip. It was supposed to be a one-hour ride. It took three hours Oof, that's in, in total. That's, un, that's too un, much. It's unacceptable. Right. And also this... Um, has something to do, some argue, with um, the drivers? Because these are supposedly just regular folks who have a car and they're going from A to B. These are not your car hailing platform registered um, drivers who go through a number of hurdles to get vetted. Um, Although some can argue that even for car hailing um, platforms, they're not super strict about this, unlike traditional taxi drivers. But for these ride sharing drivers, they literally just need to sort of say, I'm doing this and they can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's understandable from the driver's point of view, because they're not doing anything wrong. They're taking advantage of something that's available to them. And of course, they want to make as much money as they possibly can. Um, So I can understand their situation, but it's easy to understand the passenger's frustration as Mm -hmm. well. Another reason that we're seeing this, you know, an an, uh, an acceptable uh, situation here in the ride sharing sector is that we are seeing a lot of full time ride sharing drivers. You know, in theory, um, when you think of this ride sharing service, it it means like the the driver could be like a on his or her way to the company and then he might she or just uh, might pick up the passenger but in reality there are a lot of like full-time ride sharing drivers meaning that they are intentionally picking up different ride sharing orders maybe 
ten or eight within one day, and then then they're using different platforms to you know earn as much money as possible.、Mm. And the reason behind that is that we're seeing a fast growing of ride hailing service here in China, and the market is expanding rapidly. But the thing is that in some Country, uh, cities or, or or smaller cities, you are seeing that this、uh, sector is saturated, meaning that we have ex- an excessive number of ride-hailing drivers. And according to previous reports, many cities, including Jingdezhen, Suzhou, Chongqing, these are pretty、uh, developed. But smaller cities, compared to Beijing and Shanghai, they have announced an alert of excessive transportation capacity and reminded drivers to enter the ride-hailing industry cautiously. Taking Hangzhou as a,、uh, as an example, a ride-hailing vehicle supervision system in Hangzhou showed that the daily average number of online ride-hailing orders was about 1.3 million in the second quarter of 2024. That's an increase of 14 percent compared to the previous quarter. So that means the market is really growing. But that doesn't really represent every driver can take the order because you can see that the daily average number of orders per car was about fifteen. That's a decrease of nearly five percent compared、mm. to the previous quarter.、Mm. So there are too many drivers, and、uh, despite it, the market is growing. And、uh, however, you, you can see the、uh, dropping income, the general dropping、mm. income of drivers. So that's why many drivers they are turning to the full time ride sharing drivers.、Mm, yeah, I mean,、mm. we talked about from a passenger's perspective. One of the downsides is, for example, Lin's situation. The positive side for customers is that there are so many drivers, and I guess that translates to minimal waiting time、mm. when you do put in an order. That's a great benefit for the passengers, but yeah, for the drivers themselves, when the market's saturated, it makes it tough for them to make a living. Yes, and the reason why it's worth our attention to differentiate between the different drivers of the ones that, in theory, were okay. You're just Um, going to work and therefore on the side without any fuss, just bring a couple or one more person along. This kind of ride-sharing driver versus the professional full-time ride. Hailing drivers,、um, their intentions are different because the first guy apparently is just trying to earn an extra buck to cover the cost, to offset the cost a little bit.、Mm-hmm. Not really intentionally saying that I want to make a lot of money from this. Not their full time job. Exactly.、Mm-hmm. But for the other guy who's the full time driver, he's trying to maximize profit. And、yeah. don't forget, he needs to give away a cut of his profit to the platform as well. So that person is trying to pack. As many people into the car and to try to earn a bit more money.、Yeah. So, so the the business is kind of is kind of messy、um, because you've got like different intentions and different、uh, scenarios in that sense. Yeah, and not a lot of transparency either. I was kind of trying to search in Canada if they had a similar situation or if something different was going on, and I found that recently there was a new ride sharing service started in Toronto. It's called Hover. And it's a very interesting business model. The idea behind it is this: the drivers keep one hundred percent of the fare. They don't pay fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty percent to the company at all. Whatever they get from the passenger, that's what they keep, and that is accomplished. I know you're thinking now. How does the company make any money? Well, the drivers they pay a twenty dollar membership fee per month, and that's how the company makes their money. It was so popular in the beginning; more than ten thousand driver, more than ten thousand drivers applied in the first month to this company. But if we look ahead in the future, they might run into this problem of oversaturation、yeah. as well.、Mm-hmm. And also, there are some other complaints coming from mainly、um, consumers or users, and I want to run the, them by you and see if you agree. One is.、Um, Uh, people say, "Oh, it's because these drivers are not professionals. They've not received training and code of conduct." In the sense that some of these drivers might refuse the so-called troublesome passengers, and what falls into this category? Pregnant ladies. Older folks who might need to use a wheelchair or something、mm. like that, or people with large luggage, or. Passengers who are not easygoing. Apparently, that's a label too. So, well, that that one I understand.、Mm-hmm. You know, if you have maybe if 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 you know that that passenger has gotten bad reviews in the past or something, and they're rude. 
But the other ones you mentioned, pregnant women and the elder, that's discriminatory. Exactly. But here comes the problem, and this might have something to do with the nature of the service. That is, it is, is it a proper business? Or is it just something that somebody does casually on the side and is not subject to strict company policy and reviews? Because if you're charging money and treating the other party as a client, as somebody who's purchasing your business, then aren't you liable to provide Quali- quality service, mm. and if you are, then you can't refuse a pregnant lady. Yeah. But it's if the, a, but yeah. if this is just some guy who's driving his car to work, mm-hmm. then and trying to earn a buck on the side, and he might say, "Well, I'm not a professional driver. I'm just trying to do something nice but and earn it, a buck." But mm-hmm. is, sorry to interrupt you, Lee. But um, before I forget, is it known to the passenger what kind of driver is coming to pick you up? Whether it is a full-time driver, meaning that's their living, or if it's somebody who's just on their way to work. I I think that's a very good point. And to be honest, for different platforms, they've got different regulations. And 41 and major uh, ride-hailing service platform here in China, actually, they've got their new regulation saying that they... Uh, the uh, very detailed you know, personal information of the customer cannot really be shown to the driver. So that actually, in, to some extent, prevent the potential discrimination. Mm. And also that could also protect the safety of uh, certain groups of, uh, of, of passengers uh, due to previous cases. And a, and as Huyang said, it's a pretty flexible service. And uh, that can be, I mean, convenient for drivers and passengers, but also leaving room for controversy and debate. And one example would, would, would be the uh, highway tolls, which I mentioned earlier. That is also a, a major source of complaints coming from the passengers because uh, for this very flexible ride-sharing service, the platform actually encourages drivers and passengers to negotiate how to handle these expenses in advance. That's a bad idea. Mm-hmm. That's a bad idea, right? Yeah. So that's why a lot of passengers, they are complaining that they are being charged, um, uh, they are being asked to uh, pay for this highway tolls and bridge fees without being informed. And meantime, some drivers, they're also complaining that they see very little, uh, very few passengers who are willing to share the highway costs. Yeah, that's like if you go to a restaurant and the manager in the restaurant says, "Um, yeah, just work it out with your waiter (laughs) how how much you want to pay for the food, right? It doesn't make sense. But also, uh, that doesn't make any sense. I agree with you. But I understand there's something really murky here. That is, let's say if you have two people who are going to join this car ride, right? And then one person joins 20 minutes before the other other person and yeah. how are you going to yeah. share the you've been in the car toll? longer you, you should sh- pay more yeah exactly I so think that's that <laughs> might not really happen because mm-hmm. in theory the uh, highway toll that you need to cover is only the distance that you are on where you are on the car so right. in theory you can't really drop uh, any oh, yeah, passenger or take the yeah. passenger on the highway so that would just uh, <laughs> yeah that <laughs> makes that sense yeah. but that's also really interesting cuz um there are different case scenarios when this could um, be useful, this kind of service. One uh, is, I suppose, what people had initially in mind is that, you know, when it's long distance travel, let's say Beijing to Tianjin, and I checked, it's about 120 to 100 to, sorry, 120 to 170 kilometers of distance. And it makes a lot of sense if somebody's driving and then you pick somebody up along the way or multiple people or whatnot. So that's one kind of situation. And then in, you know, the busy, bustling cities of Beijing, Shanghai, and all these places, and then when the travel distance might be much shorter than that, mm. but, um, and, and then the roads are much more complicated or, or whatnot, and then how do you utilize the service? And then people have different disputes. Yeah, one of the disputes that they have internationally, and I, I'm wondering if they have it here in China too, is the pick up, uh, pick up or perhaps the drop off yeah. point as well. And the reason I wanted to ask about whether we know if the driver is a full-time driver that's their job or whether it's just somebody on their way to work because if a lot of the times the complaints will say i wanted to go to this building but you're dropping me off a five minute walk away from there so that's why i wanted to know that distinction right but usually people kind of just assume that if it's a ride-sharing driver it's a ride-sharing driver 
with the limited, the the least amount of requirement, and then you've got some of the full time guys who are like flooding the market.、Mm. There are so many issues here, but are there ways to address them? How do we get better? How do we move forward? It's a really good question, and I think transparency. That company that I mentioned in Toronto is a good example because the customers know how much the drivers are making. The Uh, drivers know how much the passengers are paying. The passengers know how much the other passengers are paying as well. When there's transparency on everything, there are fewer opportunities for conflict.、Mm. And also, we've also seen more safety、uh, measures being taken by the major ride-hailing service platform here in China due to previous experience. So I would say overall, the experience is much better than what we have a few years ago. Mm. Mm. So with more studying of the market and examining it. And coming up with solutions, gradually you get better. And now we're、um, voicing some of these complaints and see can technology help us to solve these disputes?